All right, you go in and you turn on your lights and there you have a four bulb fixture that turns on immediately. It's a uh, T8 bulbs and there are four bulbs, but the fixture right next to it is completely dead. They're both the same units and they are crummy units that were installed four years ago. One thing I can say is that when we switch to electronic ballasts, that some of these are pure junk. And when you consider that a ballast costs about $20 to replace it, I don't know that you're saving any money. Have some tools ready to start before you do this project because you're going to need these things. It's good to have a, a yellow wire nut, a couple of them. You're going to need some of the orange ones. You're going to need your ballast. And this particular one is a GE 432 dash 120 residential and uh, this is a four bulb T8 ballast and uh, they're all made in China but this is probably one of the better ones you're gonna need something to make sure that your power is not on this is just a neon bulb tester um, but you don't want to work with a hot power system and you want uh, some wire cutters and snips and screwdriver and you're also going to need uh, something to strip the wires. We're going to use a ladder, of course, to climb up here and take down the plastic fixture and then take out the light bulbs. Fluorescent light bulbs are very dangerous if you cut yourself with them, so it's nice to have an assistant that will grab the bulbs for you and put them down safely. It's also important to know that when you turn on your fixture and all four bulbs are dead, it's your ballast or your power to your, to your system and almost always it's going to be the ballast. Alright, the bulbs are out. I mean, if you can't get the bulbs out of the fixture, forget about trying to replace the ballast. That's not for you. This fixture is made by Lithonia Lighting and I've got to say that it is a pure piece of junk. The ballast in it is not worth two cents. I put about ten of these in when I remodeled this place and in less than four years I've already replaced five of them so you're going to get to be a pro at replacing them if you lose, use Lithonia. One thing you need to notice when you're working on this is that the ballast is covered up with a metal rim and you're going to take these off by squeezing the tabs just inside the tabs and removing the rim Make sure your power is off. Now I've removed the uh, cover and you can see it's got these tabs on each end. And when we put it back we're going to squeeze these tabs together and make sure that it covers the fixture which looks like this. And as you can see there's red and blue wires on one side. There's yellow wires on the opposite side and black and white wires which are the power wires. The present ballast in this system is called Keystone technologies from Ambler, Pennsylvania and it is a true piece of junk. They just don't last. Alright, one other thing on your ballast. Um, don't let this guy at the store sell you a ballast you don't need. This is a 120 volt. Don't buy the 270 or whatever high voltage one you need. You don't need that. And like I say, this is the GE 432 120 RES slash DIY T8 it's for four bulbs four lamp T8 bulbs now look they talk to you all the time about proper grounding but these things come painted with this black paint that's on forever before getting set up take a rotor tool or a good sandpaper file and file off excess black paint so you have good grounding on these things and uh, this is something that they really don't stress, but these need to be grounded. And um, this does not have a grounding wire that's separate. So before you bring it to where you're going to use it, get all the excess paint off. Now this is the old ballast. It's a piece of junk, T Keystone Technologies. And I replaced this with that General Electric ballast. And I'm going ahead a little bit now and tell you a little story about what happened when I put that one in. Two bulbs worked and two bulbs didn't. So guess what? I had a bad ballast. So make sure you've had your receipt and be prepared to return it. The other thing I noted was that 
I had two sets of fluorescent fixtures all controlled by one light switch and these were four bulbs in each set. Well, I checked with a neon tester to make sure that the power was off when the switch was off and I didn't have any power. But lo and behold, because these were two separate light fixtures controlled by one switch, I did end up giving myself a little shock when I touched one of the wires which was actually running to the next fixture. So look, go to your fuse box and make sure you shut everything off before you start doing this. And the other thing is, neon tester is not necessarily enough. Went to Home Depot and for $10 I bought one of these AC voltage detectors which work very well. And um, here's a little package from it. Buy one of these things, you don't have to touch the wire. You can tell whether the wire is hot without taking off the uh, caps. The other thing is, I told you to have the orange caps available ahead of time. Make sure you have some red ones available also because sometimes these fixtures are run in sequence and in series and um, when you take off one of the red caps sometimes they break and you need another one so get some of the red caps some of the orange ones and you may want to have a yellow one as well um, but pretty much it's the orange ones you're going to use mostly definitely though get a good tester to make sure that your AC voltage is off and make sure you do turn the fuse off now I'm not an electrician so I'm doing this as a handyman now here you can see I'm just testing out this fixture device to see whether you can pick up a hot lead and watch what happens here. I go to the hot plug and I'm not even touching it. You can see it's lighting up and ringing. The ground one doesn't do anything. But the hot one definitely is telling me it's hot without even touching it. You need a device like that to make sure that you're not going to shock yourself doing this. Now the next thing is hooking up all the wires. This is the old fixture, the old ballast that I've taken out, but if you look at it you're going to see it's got a black and a white wire which come out on one side and that's the power wires. Now look, you've got your power switch completely shut off. Make sure nothing is hot and the black wire is going to go to the black one the white wire is going to go to the white one. And you need to trim these wires. You don't want to leave them real long underneath underneath the uh, fixture itself because it's just a pain in the neck. And a lot of people don't know how to use these wire twisters, these wire connectors. And I'm going to show you how to do that in one second. Now here's the yellow lead coming off of the ballast and the yellow lead going to the fixture itself and here's how you put them together. You don't twist them or anything. You take the wire off, take some of the shielding off, take an orange wire nut, put the wire nut on it, and then just screw it in clockwise. You don't twist them around each other. This will happen automatically. And make sure that you don't have too much wire exposed, that it's all tucked in good. Now watch when I take the nut off. You'll see what it looks like underneath there. It's all twisted on itself and it's making good contact. And that's how you use these things to connect from one fixture to another fixture. And you'll need a bunch of the orange ones for your ballast. Now depending upon what the wiring is for each fixture, especially if they're wired in series, you may need to have a red cap also. Sometimes when you take the caps off to connect your power source, which will be the black and the white wires, the the red the red cap itself will break so make sure you have some red ones it doesn't hurt to have some yellow ones and for sure the orange ones and you're going to need mostly the orange ones these wires will connect very nicely with the orange wire nuts and I'm using the ideal ones um, they're stock number 30073 buy them by the hundred because if you buy these junk fixtures like I have you're going to need lots of them this is a different fixture than the one I was working on before, but I just want to show you the basics here. Our power leads on this one are connected to the black and the white wires 
coming off of the ballast. And in these I'm actually using a plug-in type thing, not a ceiling mounted thing. And I use this one just to test T12 bulbs. The uh, blue and red connect to the blue and red. The yellow connect to the yellow. These are already connected. Now when you put your shield back on, you want to make sure that your wires are not being pinched. Okay, the shield is back on and check particularly at the top to make sure that the wires are free and not being pinched by the shield. And same thing on the other end and all the wires are free. There's no wires that are in contact with the metal and you don't want to pinch them because you don't want to short them. So again, after you've got your shield back on, put your light bulbs back in. You, you must know how to put a fluorescent bulb in. Make sure it's in the track right, twist it the right amount. Then put the uh, plastic cover back on. Go out and turn your power source back on, you know, your fuse box, and check the lights and make sure they're working. Now when I first did this, two lights came on, two lights didn't. I had a bad ballast, took the receipt right back and went and got another ballast at uh, Home Depot without any problem and went and bought at the same time my AC voltage detector because I got zapped a little bit doing this project. Good luck with what you're doing. I am not an electrician, but when you buy junky fixtures, you're bound to be replacing the ballast. So you want to think about this. Now we have electronic ballast instead of the uh, magnetic ballast, which used to last for 20 years and use more electricity but you're going to spend $20 more for ballast and make sure you don't overspend on your ballast. Buy the, buy the correct ballast and uh, don't overbuy on the ballast. Uh, the 4 light T8 ballast that I bought cost $20 at Home Depot. It costs more at Lowe's. And the commercial electric AC volts detector that I bought at Home Depot cost $10. So good luck with all this and you'll save yourself a lot of money eventually compared to getting an electrician to do this.